Psalm 32, 3. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Silence, being imprisoned in silence and by silence, could make one suffer. Out with it. Dapat ko ano ang ipahiwatig, ipahiwatig, anong dapat sabihin, sabihin, anong dapat ipaalam, ipaalam. Father, we thank you that you are truth and that your truth sets free. Nawa Panginoon, turuan mo kami na makalaya sa mga bilangguang madalas kami rin naman ang may gawa. O kaya ginawa ng mga kapwa sa aming paligid. Teach us, Lord, the power of your truth and the victory in your truth. Lead us, teach us, heal us. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray with thanksgiving. Matthew 19, verse 12, when Jesus was asked about a very special kind of people, the eunuchs, these are young boys who are castrated so they don't develop into full manhood, so they serve the female members of royal families. He was asked about the personality of these people. And we're going to look at this personality not only for the eunuchs themselves, but for all types of personalities represented by them in the te Jesus' teaching. Matthew 19, 12, Jesus says, For there are eunuchs who were born that way. And there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. And there are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. So ang pagkatao daw, ang personalidad, ang realidad ng personalidad ng mga tao ay pwedeng dahil they were born that way, at pwede din naman na they were raised, cultured, influenced, nurtured to become that way. At meron naman, on their own free will and volition, they choose to be that way. So tatlong uri ng pagkatao, tatlong pinagmumula ng personalidad, o kaya kombinasyon ng mga yon. Kaya meron mga sinasabi nila, mula nung nag-aral ako, nagbago ako. Mula nung nagkaroon ako ng born again experience, nabago ako. Meron namang mga kahit anong born again experience ang madaanan nila, hindi rin nagbabago yung ibang uri ng pagkatao nila. At sila ay uh, nadidisappoint, nalulungkot, parang bigo, dahil ba't hindi sila nagbago? Yung pala, merong hindi pwedeng baguhin. If you were born that way, yun ang nature mo. Sabi nga sa Bible, can a leopard change its spots or an Ethiopian change his skin? And the obvious answer is no. So yung mga inborn traits ng tao, hindi yun nababago. Kahit ano pa maging religious experience mo, kahit ano pang daanasan mong bundok o tsunami o baha o ulan, pero meron naman na naging ganun ka lang, halimbawa naging maramdamin ka, naging maramot ka dahil sa paghihirap sa buhay, dahil sa mga kabiguan, o naging masyado kang mapagduda dahil sa dami ng loko sa'yo, you were conditioned, you were nurtured to become that, yun pwedeng baguhin if you're going to be nurtured in another direction. Ano ba, dati kang bigo, lagi ka na lang natalunan, tapos bigla kang nanalo, bigla kang sumaya, pwedeng maiba na yung pagkatao mo, maiba yung personality mo because now you are nurtured another way. Meron naman, masyado mapagduda, ayaw magtiwala, kasi pasyan niya na maging ganun sa kanyang obvious and conscious self-protection, pwede niya rin baguhin yun. Pwede niya sabihin ko, hindi na ako magdududa, hindi ako magiging sobrang skeptical ngayon dahil gusto kong ibahin ang style ko sa buhay, pwede niya magawa. So may mga bagay na nandun talaga, tatanggapin mo, may mga bagay na dahil inilagay lang sa'yo, pwede mong tanggalin at mayroong mga bagay na ikaw lang nagpasya, be, magpasya ka, kabaligtaran, maiiba yun. And this governs the basic realities about people's personhood and personality. Being a eunuch, being a person, or any type of person, any type of talent, any type of uh, character could be inborn. It could be nature. It cannot be changed. Or also, it could be conditioned. It could be because of nurture. Therefore, it can be reconditioned. Can be changed up to a point. And being a eunuch could also be a choice. Therefore, anytime you choose otherwise, you can be changed. And most of the time, we are complex people. Our personality, our present psychological and psychic makeup 
is composed of a combination of those three roots of personality. Anong inang kinalaman niyan sa ating napakahalagang dapat na pag-aralan na out with it? Many people deny or hide or suppress their true thoughts and feelings. Yung bang inis na inis sila pagka ganito yung ginagawa mo pero hindi sila kumikibo, kinikimkim lang nila. Pero hindi naman nila napapalitan yung reality na lagi silang nainis. Ano ba, mayroong biyanan na offend na offended pagka ang kanyang manugang, eh ganito yung ginagawa. Pero hindi niya sinasabi, kinikimkim niya. Meron naman na hirap na hirap sa ipinapagawa sa kanyang trabaho kasi hindi naman yun ang natural talent niya. Pero hindi na lang siya kumikibo, kinikimkim din niya. Why? Because we deny and hide our truth. Many people deny their personal reality for fear of judgment or rejection or punishment. May nagtanong pa sa akin sa Facebook, paano po kayo sasabihin sa isang kumukuha sa akin na mag-anak sa binyag na ayoko maging ninong, gusto ko maging kaibigan na lang siya, hindi kumpare. So kundi sabihin mo plainly, in your best tone, sabihin mo, ayaw mo maging kumpare siya, gusto mo lang magkaibigan kayo. So mahirap po yata magsalita. Oo nga, sabi ko, pero yun ang gusto mo sabihin, hindi maghirap ka. Nasabi mo yung gusto mo, kaya sa naghihirap ka, dahil hindi mo sinabi. Pareho lang namang mahirap yan eh. And this is the main issue of our lives. Jesus wants us free, and yet many of us are not free because we're too afraid of rejection. We're too afraid of judgment. We're too afraid that people will not accept us. And yet, when you're slave of your wanting to be popular and accepted, you cannot really be free. Psalm 39, 1-3 I said, I will watch my ways. I will put a muzzle on my mouth. So I remained utterly silent, not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. Yan ang bunga ng silence. Yan ang bunga ng pagtatago ng tunay na nadarama, tunay na iniisip, tunay na kalagayan. May hirap sa loob. At yung hirap na yun, nabubuo at hanggang parang palaki ng palaki, hanggang parang sasabog na bulkan. Sasabog at sasabog din yun. Kaya hindi mabuting ipunin ang ipunin dahil hindi ka naman gumiginhawa habang hindi ka nagiging totoo na yung nasa sa loob mo ay siya mo ring inilalabas. Many people deny the truth of other people close to them. Sa pamilya lang, marami magulang, hindi nila tinatanggap yung katotohanan tungkol sa kanilang anak. Meron silang ambisyon ang anak nila maging piloto, pero napaka-defective halimbawa ng eyesight ng anak nila, hindi nila matanggap yon. O kaya meron silang ibang ambisyon na maging kurso, ang isang ambisyon na mangyari sa anak nila, eh hindi naman ganun yung natural talent. Hindi yun ang personality, hindi nila matanggap. So ano nagiging bunga ng ganito? Rejection within the family, conflict, stress, division. At marami mga anak lumalaya sa sarili nilang mga bahay kasi hindi tinatanggap ng kanilang pamilya yung katotohanan tungkol sa kanilang pagkatao. Hindi naman kailangan magkahiwahiwala yung pamilya kung tatanggapin lang natin yung katotohanan natin at yung katotohanan ng ating kapwa. People suffer for living a lie for living in denial. Yung mga dati kayong mapera, pero hindi kayong mapera ngayon, pero hindi mo tanggap na hindi kayong ngayon maluwag, and you will live in denial. You will live sa utang. You will live sa kahihiram, sa pagpapanggap. But hindi mo tanggapin ang iyong reality at mabuhay ka ayon sa iyong reality para ka lumaya. There's an example of this kind of slavery in reverse. Yung hindi niya itinago ang totoo tungkol sa kanyang sarili, kahit ano pa man ang sabihin ng mga tao sa paligid. Luke 7, 37 to 38. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So, she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. So the verse tells us that this was a woman who lived a sinful life. And usually when the word sin and woman are put together, it is usually an issue of immorality, an issue of a sexual sin. She was probably a prostitute, a concubine, a woman of what many people would call bad morals. Kasi lagi pag pinagsama yan sa tradisyon, yun ang ibig sabihin eh. Imbes ang babaeng ito ay magtago, 
Kasi ang mga taong may mga makasalanan, di ba? Pag nandiyan ang mga, mga banal na tao tulad ni Jesus, o kaya mga nagbabanal-banalang tao tulad ng mga Pharisees, umiiwa sila, tumatago sila, hindi sila papakalat-kalat kasi masisilaw sila sa liwanag, nagtatago sila sa dilim. Pero ang babaeng to iba. Nung malaman niyang nandun si Jesus, lumabas siya sa kanyang bahay at pumunta siya sa bahay ng may bahay, sa bahay pa na isang Pharisee isang religious person na siguradong lalaitin siya at magiging maliit ang pagtingin sa kanya, hindi niya yun pinansin. Ang gusto niya lumapit kay Jesus. At nanangis siya ng nanangis doon, umiyak siya ng umiyak. Kung ano man yung iniiyak niya, we are not told, but we can imagine that she was probably crying about her past life, her brokenness that had found healing in Jesus. Yung rejection sa kanya ng mga tao, she found acceptance in Jesus. At kay mga kasalanan niya, she found forgiveness and cleansing. Kaya ito ngayon, may dala-dala siyang regalo kay Jesus. At hindi siya papayag na mapigil siya sa pagregalo kay Jesus, sa pag-iyak sa paanan ni Jesus to the point na nahugasan na nga ng luha niya yung paanong tao at ang ipinampahid niya ay eh, ang kanyang buhok. Nagbasag siya ng pagkamahal mahal na pabango, ibinuhos niya sa paanan ni Jesus hindi niya kinimkim yung matatawag mong inferiority o fear of rejection, inilabas niya kung sino siya, isang makasalanan tao, forgiven by God through Jesus. And the Lord affirmed her. Sabi niya, your sins are forgiven. Have peace. Hindi siya nagpatakot. And what she did, aside from being expressive of her worship and gratitude for the acceptance that Jesus gave her, It was also very therapeutic. Na ilabas niya yung dapat sana ikinikim-kim, inililihim, ikinahihiya. Inilabas niya at ang natanggap niya affirmation, not rejection from Jesus, not judgment. And that is a lesson for all of us. Hindi natin kailangang itago sa Diyos kung sino tayo dahil kahit sa ang dilim ka sumiksik, nandun din ang Diyos, ang kadiliman ay liwanag din sa Kanya kasi siya ay liwanag. So what's the point in hiding? Ngayon, kung sa tao ka lang naman nagtatago, ano naman ang mapapalamo sa tao? Kahit naman wala kang masyadong malalaking kasalanan, ire ka pa rin ng mga tao. Kaya dapat may iba yung attitude natin pag nasa Panginoon. We should have the attitude of victory, the attitude of freedom, the attitude to be free and to act free. Denying and hiding, suppressing true thoughts and feelings won't make them disappear. Marami nagtatanong, Pwede po ba ang babae manligaw? Bakit naman hindi? Eh, kung may nadarama ka talaga. Kaya lang, huwag ka naman magpakachip na pagulong-gulong ka na sa harapan niya at patambling-tambling. Pwede mo na siguro ipahayag. Lagi mong dala ng pimiento sandwich. Ganyan. May kasama pang mainom na ako anuman. O kaya regaluhan mo ng maliliit na bagay na ginawa mo, thoughtful. Bakit hindi? Hindi ko dinidiscourage ang mga women to express their feelings. But there's a dignified way of doing it. Kasi baka naman mamaya, nalilibang lang yun, hindi ka napapansin, hindi napansin ka tuloy. Pero kung natatanda, tapa, nararamdaman mong nire-reject ka na, eh di, umisod-isod ka na uli palayo. At least you tried. Malay mo naman. ba diba? Parang, hindi mo dapat laging itago ang nadarama mo. Don't criminalize your feelings. Don't criminalize your truth. Halimbawa, nagdaramdam ka pagka ini-ignore ka ng asawa mo, tapos hindi ka nalang kumikibo, Pwede mong sabihin yun. Sabi mo, alam mo, nagdaramdam mo ko pag ginaganyan mo ko. Dahil kung matino naman siya, i-honor niya yung nararamdaman mo. So, may makukuha ka rin sa pagsasabi ng totoo kesa kinikim-kim mo lang. Ngayon, kung hindi siya nakinig, tumuloy pa rin siya, eh ano naman na wala sa'yo, eh dati na nga siya ganun. At least, nasabi mo, ang gusto mong sabihin. Marami tayong sobrang self-censorship na bilang mga anak ng Diyos, dapat tanggalin natin sa mga sarili na because we are free in the Lord. Free to be good, free to do good. Meron restaurant, ang ganda. Papasok pa lang kayo. Sabi, Ay, baka mahal. Masyadong maganda ang carpet. So, hindi na kayo papasok. Doon na lang kayo sa walang carpet. Yung pala, hindi naman ganun kamahal. Ikaw lang ang pumigil sa sarili mo. Yung pupunta ka sa isang opisina, sabi mo agad sa kwadya, pwede bang pumasok dyan? Siyempre, pag tinanong mo yung kwadya, kasi hindi. Dahil ikaw na mismo yung nagbibigay sa kanya ng authority eh, para kapigilin. Marami tayong sobrang pinipigil. Nagtatago tayo sa dilim, umiiyak sa dilim, nagtitiis sa dilim. But it is pointless to do that because that won't set you free. And it's pointless to hide things 
Especially kung meron kang dapat sabihin. Sabihin mo na para ka lumaya agad. O ikaw, isang anak na kalahati na palang sem, hindi ka pumapasok. Dahil puro lakwatsa ang inatupag mo sa buhay. Sabihin mo na sa parents mo, ipagtapat mo na. Kasi malalaman din nila yun. Nabuta ng ikaw ang nagtapat, medyo nakontrol mo pa yung method ng pagsasabi. Meron kang nadispal ko sa opisina, meron kang nagawang hindi tama, meron kang uh, na-damage, hindi ka pa nabibisto, ikaw na magsabi. Don't keep it as a secret because it will come out. They would, it's pointless to hide in the dark. Luke 8, 17, there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Mahalagang unahan mo ang balita at yung sarili mong nadarama, yung totoo, kasama yan sa dahilan ng kamatayan ni Jesus para kapalayain. Sayang ang kamatayan ni Jesus, sayang ang kanyang dugo, sayang ang kanyang paghihirap kung alipin ka pa rin ang pagtatago sa dilim. Keeping dark secrets is like storing poison. It destroys its container. Kung may dapat sumabog, unahan na ang bulkan. Mahalaga yan. Unahan na agad kesa maunahan ka pa. Pent up, accumulated, collective denials and suppressions could burst in damaging ways. Kaya nagdaramdam ka, kinikimikim mo, nagdaramdam ka, mamaya bigla kang sasabog, bigla kang magwawala. Iintayin mo pa yun. Sabihin mo na agad para hindi dumami. Kung may dapat kumalat, unahan mo na ang hangin, unahan mo na ang chismis. May nangyari halimbawa sa inyong pamilya that people might consider scandalous, malalaman din naman ng iba, ikaw na unang magsabi. You can tell people, my family is going through a difficulty because this is happening to us. Pwede sa'yo na nanggaling, hindi na sa iba nalaman. At pag nasabi mo na yun, luluwag din ang dibdib mo kasi wala ka nang itatago, wala ka nang iingatan. Lahat naman ng pamilya may baho. Yung iba magaling lang magtago. Pero lalabas din yun. Bakit po hindi pakawalan? Di ba ang baho dapat pakawalan? Para mawala. Dapat ang mga anak ng Diyos natbubuhay sa katotohanan, hindi sa pagkukunwari. Because truth sets free. John 4, 16-18, He told her, yung babaeng umiigib sa balon, gusto ni Jesus, iayos sa kanyang buhay, so sabi ni Jesus, go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. The acknowledgement of this truth led to the woman's liberation. Maaaring slave siya ng kanyang desire to be liked, to be loved, to be accepted, to be protected, to be surrounded by a man's arms. Kaya nakakalima na siya ng naging partner na puro hindi niya asawa at tapos ganyan yung lalaking nasa bahay niya, hindi niya rin asawa. At yun ang problema ng babaeng ito. Naghahanap siya ng ganong pag-ibig kung saan saan niya hinahanap. Hanap na siya ng hanap. At siguro kung hindi niya na-meet si Jesus, 90 years na siya at dalawang daang lalaki na yon hindi pa rin siya tapos paghanap. Pero dahil sinabi niya, I have no husband, she acknowledged the truth, nagkaroon ng opening si Jesus na very natural. Sabi ni Jesus, yes, tama ka dyan, kasi yung yung lalaking kasama mo ngayon, hindi mo rin husband. Hindi siya ginyudge, hindi nga siya pinagalitan, hindi siya pinarusahan, but for her to heal, for her to be restored, they had to begin with her truth. Kung ano yung totoo sa kanya, doon dapat ang simula ng restoration. Hindi sa isang image, hindi sa ibang kasinungalingan, hindi sa pagkukunwari. John 8, 31-32, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then the, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Ano yung truth that you will know? It's not only that Jesus died for you, that is an important truth. It's not only that you will go to heaven, that is an important truth, but you must also realize the truth that Jesus accepts and loves you unconditionally. Kasama yun sa salvation. That Jesus not only saved you from the law that makes you sinful, Jesus canceled the law and changed it with only one law, the law of love. Therefore, you are no longer called sinful because there is no law that causes you to be sinful. You've got to know that. 
And when you do that, that's the only time that you will be free. Kasi marami mga tao naging Christian pero hindi free. Yung hindi sila free to be free from the law. Lagi silang nakatali sa law. Ay guilty ng guilty. Laging nagkamali ako, ay nagkasala ako. Ikaw sinner ka, ako sinner ka. Lagi pa rin takot. Lagi pa rin nahihirapan ng law. Gayong pinalaya na ng Panginoon. Sabi ni Jesus, kailangan malaman nyo yung truth. Anong truth yon? Marami. Pero isa doon, that you are no longer counted as sinners because the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. That you should no longer be needlessly always focused on your shortcomings and the shortcomings of others. That you are always focused on your imperfection and the imperfection of others. Pagka ganun, hindi ka pa free. John 8.36, the sun sets you free. You will be free indeed. So what sets free? Truth. Be truthful. Live in and by the truth. No matter how uncomfortable and unpleasant that truth might be for you or for others, live by your truth. Live your truth. Yun ang ibuhay mo. Your truth is, you are really, and you were made by God an artist, live your art. You were made and created by God to be really a very, very good business person. Live your truth. Be a business person. Ito ang personality mo. Live your truth. Kahit nga ang mga social sciences, psychology, psychiatry, has classified people. May mga phlegmatic, mayroong mga ganito, may mga ganyang personality. Nakita na nila kasi may mga ganong basic realities about personalities. Kung ano ka, di ikaw yun. Don't be somebody else. Because when you try to be somebody else, you are in a wrong place and your right place will be empty. And that will not be good for anybody. Live your truth. Kung ano ka, ikaw yun. Kaya ka hindi nag-e-excel kumisan sa buhay because you are living somebody else's life. You are trying to be like your cousin or your mother or your aunt. Eh, iba ka naman. Pag naging totoo ka sa sarili, dun palang lalabas yung best. John 4, 28-29 yung babae yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina. Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? Certainly, she was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. She only placed it in a question form. Now, she was inviting the entire town to meet with Jesus. She found liberation. She found freedom. Without the censure, without the judgment, without the rejection. And she wanted people to experience the same freedom. Kaya naglakas loob siya. Puntahan yung mga tao. Sabi niya, may tao doon sa balon. Sinabi niya sa akin lahat ng pinagkagawa ko sa buhay. Ito na kaya ang iniintay natin. And definitely, she was excited. Hindi, definitely, hindi iniintay na judgment kundi iniintay na love, acceptance, and restoration. Importanting maintindihan natin that the truth sets free. And one of the important elements of truth is that God accepts and loves you as you are. In response to that love, you could change for the better if the bad that is in you now is there because of your decision then you can decide otherwise and be good. You can change for the better if the bad that is in you now was placed there by nurture, by conditioning. Then you can recondition yourself and you can change yourself little by little as you unlearn old habits and relearn new good ones. But what you are at birth, your inborn nature cannot and should not be changed and you should be at peace with it. And you should be at peace with the inborn nature of others. And you should be at peace with one another and live your own truths. Because that's what we all are. We are never the same. Iba-iba ang paglikha sa atin ng Panginoon. So, if you have been doing what might be considered evil, do not do what is evil. Do not do what you could avoid or you could change. Do not do what you will need to hide. Para hindi ka kailangan magtago. At yun namang hindi mo pwedeng baguhin. Huwag mo nang itago, ilabas mo para ka lumaya, makahinga, at matapunan ng liwanag. John 3, 20-21 Everyone who does evil hates the light 
and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Now the word evil here could be really morally evil or not morally evil but considered by society, even by religion as evil but not really considered by God as evil. Maraming dinidemonize ang tao, ang relihiyon na ang totoo sa Diyos, hindi naman niya dinidemonize. For instance, napakarami nating judgment na ibinibigay sa isa't isa because they break the law. Samantalang God canceled the law already and just promulgates one law of love and acceptance and restoration for all of us. So marami tayong kinoconsider sigurong evil na ang totoo, hindi naman talaga evil. So meron tayong unnecessary weight that we are carrying in our lives, unnecessary guilt, and unnecessary judgment for one another. John 3.21, the important part of this two verses. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Hindi sinabi na whoever lives perfectly, whoever lives without sin can come into the light. Ang sinasabi, whoever lives by the truth, whoever accepts his truth and knows that the truth is from God, even if it's rejected by people, you come out and live your truth and you say, this has been known by God anyway from the beginning. So what's the point in hiding it? And when you do this, you become free. Luluwag ang iyong dibdib. So kung ang katotohanan mo is, hindi ka naman talaga ganun kagaling. Tapos nagagaling-galingan ka. Pag kami nagpapagawa sa'yo, ang totoo, secretly, ipapagawa mo rin sa iba para may ibigay kang, kunwari ikaw ang gumawa, sabihin mo na ang totoo, hindi naman ako ganyan kagaling dyan, so sa iba ka na magpagawa. Then you become free. Do not stand taller than what you really are kasi mahirap tumiyad all the time. So kung ito talaga yung height mo, di ito. Kung ito talaga yung kulay mo, di ito. At kung ayaw nila sa'yo, sorry, you both lose. But you don't have to be a slave of people's opinion and acceptance. Kailangan palayain ang sarili, ang iksi-iksi ng buhay para ubusin sa pagpapanggap, sa pagkukunwari. At sa pagpipilit sa iba na sila'y magpanggap din, therefore, nagpapahirapan ng mga tao sa isa't isa. So, to be living in the light doesn't mean changing your truth. Because there is truth that cannot be changed, remember? But it means changing what can be changed. But living in the light means accepting your truth and the truth of others. Changing places from darkness to light, from hiding and pretending to living your unchangeable truth openly, that is freedom. Through Jesus, your truth that the law criminalizes has been decriminalized by God. Kaya paulit-ulit tayo ng Jesusness, mga kapatid. Kailangan nating ma-internalize that God had decriminalized many of the things that up to now we consider crimes. Because, Romans 6.4, Don't let sin keep ruling your lives. You are ruled by God's kindness and not by the law. Pag sinabing don't let sin keep ruling your lives, hindi sinasabing be perfect. Do not have sin that you become your master. Ang ibig sabihin, huwag mong gawing amo ang concept ng kasalanan na lagi mong kinakatakutang magkasala, lagi kang takot na takot na parusahan sa kasalanan. Sabi ko, no, 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 you are ruled by God's kindness now, not by the law. Huwag mo nang gawing panukat sa sarili mo yung law ni Moses. Huwag mo nang gawing panukat sa iba yung law ni Moses. You are now ruled by only one law, the law of God's kindness. And that kindness is boundless. Hindi yan ma-accept ng iba eh, kasi gusto nila law pa rin. Hindi nila matake na at sa lagay, talaga, tinatanggap ako ng Diyos, so dapat tanggapin ko rin yung iba. Anong gusto mo? Magtanggihan tayo sa isa't isa, tinatanggihan din tayo ng Diyos, ba't pa namatay si Jesus? E di sayang lang ang lahat kung babalik ka rin to be a slave of the law. If what you naturally are is toxic to hide in darkness, expose it. Doon mo rin naman makikilala kung sino mga tunay mong kaibigan. At sa pamilya, dapat meron tayong unconditional acceptance of each other. Bakit may naglalaya sa pamilya? Bakit nagkakalayo, nagkakaiwahiwalay? Kasi sa pamilya pa nga tayo unang-unang nare-reject. Nire-reject ka ng nanay mo dahil malaki ang tenga mo. Nire-reject ka ng tatay mo dahil ang lapad ng noo mo. Nire-reject ka ng makamag-anak nyo dahil ganito ka, dahil ganun ka. Dapat sa pamilya ang unconditional acceptance. Because when you're accepted in your family, 
and not tolerated to be inferior or to be wrong or to be evil, but accepted, then help to become the best version of your own self, that's how you will face the world with a sense of security, a sense of selfhood, a sense of belongingness. Dapat nating i-rethink yung pamilya. May mga nanay, sobrang religyosa, magpapakounsel sa akin. Nadiscovery ko po, ganito yung anak ko, bla 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 bla. Eh, di kones pa naman po ako sa church. So, anong gagawin ko? Eh, anong gagawin mo? Dahil di kones ka, itatakwil mo yung anak mo. Para walang masabi ang church sa sa'yo. Eh, parang ganun po dapat. Di po ba leadership by example? Anong example? Nag-lead ka dahil meron kang maiko-contribute, meron kang galing, pero hindi ka example. Si Jesus lang example. Napakalaki naman niya itong mission na maging example. E di magpapako ka dali sa cross para complete. At hindi lang yon bumangon ka after the third day. Kasi incomplete, pag namatay ka, di ka bumangon. So, e ano pong gagawin ko? Yung mga anak ko, may ganito, may ganong bisyo, may ganyan, may bla bla bla. Tapos leader ako sa church. Sabi ko, alam mo mga kapatid, bago ka maging jacolisa at kung ano-ano pa, pwede ba maging nanay ka na lang muna? Kasi kung hindi mo kaya maging nanay ng anak mo, paano ka magiging leader ng ibang tao? Magpakananay ka na lang. Eh ano po sasabihin na, ibang mo sila. Mga anak din nila, may nangyayari din. Mayroon ba namang pamilyang walang nangyayaring mga ganyan? Di ba? Kung gagawin mo na example, perfect dapat yung family mo para ka mag-serve, eh di wala nag-serve. Hirap yata nun. Tapos may nagsaserve. Biglang may nangyari sa pamilya niya, tatanggalin mo, ganun ka kakruel. Yun yung law. That's why we were freed from the law. And when you can relax about the good things that happen to you, and relax even about the bad things that are beyond your control, and your mga lack of perfection, and you can relax and know that God is kind, God is loving, babangon ako, i-restore ako ng Panginoon, that's what it means to be a child of God. Hindi maging overly strict about ourselves, and overly strict on others. So mahalaga yon. expose it. Meron kang dapat sabihin, Pastor, alam niyo po, minsan nagkamali ako eh. While I'm out on uh, out of town duty, nagtaksil ako sa asawa ko once. Eh, yan din po ba? Ipagtatapat ko pa rin. Alam mo, kung paulit-ulit-ulitin mo yan, eh, ipagtapat mo para matulungan ka niya, maikadena ka niya. Di ba? O kaya, kung binablockmail ka na nung nakapartner mo in crime, hinihingang ka na ng pera para huwag magsubog sa asawa mo, eh, sabihin mo na sa asawa mo para huwag kang makontrol na nung bablockmail sa'yo. Hindi naman po ganun. Eh, balak mo pa bang ulitin? Hindi na po talaga. Nagsisising ako, di ko huwag mo nang sabihin para huwag na siya magulo. Huwag mo nalang ulitin. Merong sasabihin ka, meron din hindi. Kasi kung mas makakatulong na manahimik ka na lang, total, hindi mo na ulitin, guguluhin mo pa siya eh. Tahimik na tahimik ang buhay niya, guguluhin mo. Pero kung nagiging addict na po yata ako, pastor, sobrang na ako nagkakasino. Yung husband ko nasa abroad, nauubos na po ang sweldo niya. Eh ipagtapat mo na sa kanya. Huwag mo nang sabihin na nagka-cancer yung nanay mo at pinapagamot mo yung pala natalo ka sa kasino. Dahil mamaya makikita yung nanay mo, buhay na buhay. Di ba? So pagtuloy nandyan siya, gusto mo yung nanay mo, pag mukhay naghihingalo para meron kang visual aid. Ipagtapat mo para kanya matulungan. Alam niyo yung mga pagkakamali natin na pwedeng maulit pa, kailangan natin ng tulong, ipagtapat sa ating mga mahal sa buhay para wala kang itinatago. Lalo kung merong nagpapahirap sa'yo, nang ma-blackmail na sa'yo, na nakokontrol na yung buhay mo, so, ah, talaga, isusumbong mo kalika, sasamaan pa kita. Unahan mo pa, para ka lumaya. Ang bawat lihim na iniingatan natin, na isa nating Panginoon na kumokontrol sa atin. Mas konti yung lihim mo, mas libre ka. Come to terms with your reality. Si Zacchaeus, chief tax collector. Ang daming nadaya, kaya yumaman ng sobra. Nung nagkaroon siya ng personal encounter with the Lord, Luke 19.8, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Sabi ni Jesus, Indeed, salvation has come to this house. And he was saved, not because he was giving to the people. This is an evidence that he was already saved. And not only that, 
Now he will be saved not only from the fires of hell, but he will be saved from his guilt feelings. He will be saved from the condemnation of the people he cheated. He will be saved from the condemnation and rejection of his community. Kaya yung salvation niya kompleto. Hindi lang salvation from eternal damnation, but salvation from all the other little hells on earth. Nakawala siya dahil inamin niya, nandaya po ako. And a tax collector like him had records. Therefore, he knew kung kanino siya nandaya, magkano yun, kaya kaya niyang i-times four ang kabalik. May interest pa. At mga kabatid, kung kayo'y magtatapat ng inyong kasalanan, ng pagkukulang na nakaraan na hindi sapat magtapat, magbayad kayo. Kung wala pa kayong ibabayad, sabi nyo, babayaran kita, basta't kaya ko na. Pero kinikilala ko na meron akong babayarin sa'yo. Alam mo, dinaya kita noon, alam mo, inutangan kita noon, di kita binayaran, nire-recognize ko na ngayon yun, babayaran kita. Yun ang ginawa nitong si Zacchaeus. Alam nyo yung meron kayong utang, tapos hindi nyo binabayaran, tapos ayan yung pinagkakautangan nyo, yung pagod na pagod kang dito tumingin, kasi nandiyan nyo siya. Kunwari, hindi mo nakikita. Tapos iba pa mga topic mo, yung tawa ka ng tawa ng malakas para malibang siya at huwag mapunta sa singilan ng usapan. Ang hirap yata nung may tinatagong mga ganyan-ganyan. Di ba? Pag sobrang malakas tumawa, kahit hindi nakakatawa, may tinatago yun. Yung mga mali-maling, ay, ano nga ba ito? Ay, nakalimutan ka nyo. Nakalimuta 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 nakalimuta. Nil nililito ka nun. Para huwag mga mapag-usapan ng dapat pag-usapan kasi natatakot siya eh. Eh kung siya na nagsabi ko, alam mo ha, hindi ko nakakalimutan may utang ako sa'yo. Babayaran kita. Bullets day I will pay you. Palang araw, babayaran din kita. So, at least they recognize mo. Hindi ka tago ng tago. So this is a chaos. Change what could be changed. And then he did what could be done. Again, because it was his willful choice na dayain yung mga tao. Kaya pwede niyang baguhin yun. Kaya gusto lang idiin, hindi lahat nababago, lalo't inborn nature. Huwag kayong mag-over-expect dahil lang na-born again siya. Diba? Tatangkad na siya. Ayan, tatangkad ka na, born again ka na eh. Diba? Parang inborn na nga yung height niya eh. Diba? O ayan, may iba na yung ganito mong talent, may iba na yung ganito mong personality. May mga inborn. Huwag kayong mag-over-expect. Mabibigo lang kayo. At yung mga nabibigo na hindi naiintindihan yun, they live in a lie. They pretend. Binago na ako ng Panginoon, lalo't nag-testify sa matalang ito. One week pa lang pala, pero on the second week, bumalik na uli yung kanyang human nature. Hindi na ngayon niya masabi. Kaya huwag testify ng testify agad. Kasi kung minsan, nasa honeymoon period ka lang with the Lord. Tapos mamaya, bumalik na uli yung reality na kahit anong fasting ang gawin mo, anong prayer, anong pagpapalayas ng sakatermang demonyo, eh, hindi nagbabago. Kasi hindi naman pala demonyo yun. Nature mo lang. Paano lalayas yung nature mo? At doon ka lang matatahimik pag natanggap mo yun. Na may bagay na nababago at may bagay na hindi. Liberate yourself from secrets that would and could be exposed by outside forces. Matthew 10.26, For there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be known. Do not make darkness. Do not make secrets your hiding place. Nakita niyo yung mga istorya tungkol kay Dracula, tungkol sa mga kung ano-anong kwento ng mga kababalaghan ng mga aswang na natatakot sa liwanag, huwag kayong magtatago sa dilim. Kasi ang kadiliman is a domain of the devil. O oppressin niya kayo pag doon kayo nagtatago. Change and come out in the light. And if it is something that you are hiding but it cannot be changed anyway, accept your unchangeable truth and come out in the light just the same. 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. What qualifies us from, to walk in the light? Not a perfect life by the law. Not the ideal life idealized by religious people. What qualifies us to be in the light, to be exposed and to be with one another and to be one with one another is the blood of Jesus that purifies all of us. Not your accomplishment, not what you do, not the changes, not the improvements, but the blood of Jesus that covers all our imperfections. That is what qualifies us to be in the fellowship and that is what qualifies us to walk in the light. 
Yung iba kasi pag sinabing walk in the light, ibig sabihin don't commit sin. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Walk in the light because the light, God is light, Jesus is light, covers you. Pag wala ka sa dilim, hindi ka takot sa liwanag. Pag wala kang secret, hindi ka takot na mabisto, hindi ka takot na mablockmail. So live a free life out with your truth. Kung ano man yun. Yung girlfriend ka, ikakasan na lang kayo, ipagtapat mo muna. Alam mo, may ipagtatapat ako sa'yo. Ako si Darna. Hindi <laughs> sabihin mo agad, di ba? Kasi boyfriend mo si Ding. Hindi mo pala siya kapatid. Alam niyo, ipagtapat niyo na yung mga iba kasi, may mga kababaihan na nagkaroon sila ng anak sa pagkadalaga, tapos inilihim-lihim pa, di ba? Kakanta pa sila ng Madonna na I'm a virgin, di ba? Yung, eh, yung pala, tatlo na yung anak at limang abortion. Eh, sabihin mo, alam mo, may anak ako, may ganito ako, kesa nag-prepretend ka. Kung ayaw niya sa'yo, di wag, you both lose. Eh, pero malay mo naman, tanggapin niya, di wala ka nang dalang problema, maluwag ang buhay mo. Pero kung magkakaroon ka lang ng partner sa buhay dahil niloko mo, nagtago ka, tapos lalabas yung katotohanan na yon, syempre, laging may isang labandera, alam niya kung sino ang tunay na ama ng bata. Di ba, ganyan ang tema ng lahat ng telenovela? Iba ang ama ng bata. So, sabihin mo na. Kung ayaw niya sa'yo, eh di wag. Eh di magdurusa po ako. Eh magdusa ka talaga dahil yun know, oh. Hindi ka naging masyado maingat. May price to pay. Pero huwag kang mag-enjoy ng premyo na dahil lang sa kasinungalingan. You cannot be free. 1 John 1, 5-7 This is the message that we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. At hindi ibig sabihin na, again, na you live in the darkness is that you are living in what they call sin. It is living in pretense. Living in hiding. Hindi bagay yan sa mga anak ng Diyos na pinalaya siya. But if we walk in the light, as we've already read before, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. At yun ang basis ng fellowship, ha? Hindi yung banal siya, banal ka, no? The blood of Jesus that purifies all of us. That is the basis of our fellowship. Doon tayo tabla-tabla. Pare-pareho lang tayong nakakatindig because of the blood of Jesus. So who are we to judge one another? Jesus decriminalizes our imperfections. Very specially inborn, so-called imperfections. Psalm 6.8 Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. In the olden days, in Israel, if you committed a crime and you'll be given the punishment of death, or if you're being chased by the people whose relative you have killed, if you are hopeless, there is no way that you could save your life because you will be condemned. Wala ka masulingan. They had cities of refuge. Those cities. Pag hinahabol ka ng mga nagkocondemn sa'yo, guilty or not guilty ka, ha? Hinahabol ka. Pag nakapasok ka sa city of refuge, nobody will condemn you. No one. Yun ang inilagay ng Diyos na last resort for hopeless people to have hope. Kasi meron naman mga napagbintangan lang. Kailangan nila matagal na panahon para mapatunayang hindi sila guilty. Nasa city of refuge sila. Meron naman talagang guilty, pero nagsisina. Pero ano mangyayari ngayon sa buhay niya? Nasa city of refuge siya para mailigtas ang kanyang buhay. Ganon kahalaga sa Diyos yung buhay. At ang sabi sa Bible, God is our refuge not only just a city that you have to run to, but God is just a prayer away. That in God, pag nakapunta ka sa Diyos, wala nang sisihan dun sa loob. When I was ministering to some prisoners sa Bilibid, nagkalat yung mga kung sino-sinong mga famous at mga hindi famous na mga convicted people, Iniisa-isa niya sa akin, yung taong yun, yun yung si ganito, yung kilala na ganyan yung crime niya. Yun yun, yung si ganito, yung gano'n yung ganyang crime. Sabi ko, eh hindi ba kayo dito nagsisisihan, nagkakantsawan, hindi ba kayo nagagantihan sa isa't isa? Sabi niya, eh pare-pareho naman po kaming nakakulong dito. Ibig sabihin, pare-pareho kaming may naging kaso, nausagaan kami ng batas. So, bakit pa kami maghuhusga sa isa't isa? Kaya nga kami na nandito, nasa loob nito. At 
More than that, ganun yung city of refuge. Brothers and sisters, the church is a refuge. The church is the body of the Lord. And when you are in the church, you are in the city of refuge. Wala dapat judgment sa isa't isa. Nandito tayo dahil kailangan natin ng refuge. Kasi kung hindi natin kailangan, dapat wala ka dito. The church is a hospital. We are here because we have sicknesses, we have illnesses. Iba-iba lang nga, pero pare-pareho tayong nangangailangan ng paggamot ng Diyos. So sino tayo para sabihin, ay, sakit mo, mas malala kaysa sa sakit ko. Buti pa ako, ganito lang, ang sakit mo, iba. Walang ganun. Because the church is refuge. And God is our refuge. Kaya dapat mawala sa buhay ng mga kristyano yung sobrang pag-condemn sa isa't isa. Because when you get condemned, you will hide your truth so you don't get condemned. When you hide, you live in hypocrisy. And that is what Jesus does not like. He likes you to be free. Not to be perfect to be free, but whatever, wherever, however you are, to be free because you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Yun ang lalim, ang lawak, ang taas ng pag-ibig ng Diyos. Immeasurable. Sabi niya, no height, no depth, nothing in all creation, not angels nor demons can separate us from the love of God. In Jesus. So Psalm 6, 8, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Put out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Do not prevent and punish others from being truthful. Pagka ang mga anak nyo may ipinagtapat, pagka ang mga kapatid nyo, magulang, may nagawang kapagkakamali, do not prevent them from being truthful. Do not punish people for coming out with their own truths. Meanwhile, tayo mga Pilipino naman, magaling tayo sa pakiramdaman, magaling tayo sa pagpapakiramdam, pagpaparamdam. So hindi natin kailangan kami gawayahin ng mga Amerikano na tuwing may sasabihin sila, kailangan may formal gathering, may formal announcement, at sasabihin nila yung kanilang truth. Kasi they live in a culture of frankness. Culture nila yon. Sa atin, maraming bagay na parang sobrang sagrado para sabihin pa ng words. So pwede na tayong nagpapakiramdaman nararamdaman natin, nagkakaintindihan tayo, mga pahiwatig. That is the way we communicate our truth. So be sensitive. Huwag maging manhid at huwag magbulag-bulagan kung nararamdaman mo na o ipinaparamdam na nga sa'yo. Meron pa, ipagtatapat ko na kaya sa magulang ko na hindi ako magaling sa mat. Huwag mo na ipagtapat. Alam na nila yung araw dahil lahat ng grade mo. Sinabi na nga yun eh. Ipagtatapat mo pa. May mga bagay na hindi na kailangan sabihin kasi obvious na eh. Mark 5, 32-34. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered, And yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Ito yung babaeng dinudugo na sabi niya, mahipo ko lang alaylayan ng damit ni Jesus, gagaling ako at palihim na humipo siya sa likuran at gumaling siya. In other words, kinupit niya yung blessing. Hindi niya sinabi. Pwede na siyang umuwi kasi gumaling na siya, di ba? Pwede na siyang pabayaan ni Jesus na gumaling. At umuwi na, Pero ba't siya tinawag? Sino humipo sa akin? Kailangan malaman natin. Pero alam niya, siyempre. So yung babae, alam niyang siya yung tinutukoy, umamin sa harapan ni Jesus, lumuhod, ako po yun. Bakit ginawa yun ni Jesus? Para pagalingin ng babae? Hindi galing na nga eh. Para ipahiya? Ganun bang gagawin ni Jesus? No. Pinalaya ni Jesus ang babae mula sa bleeding, pero hindi pa siya lalaya. Kasi uuwi siya may guilt, ninakaw niya yung blessing. Hindi siya nagsabi. Uuwi siya na may fear na baka mawala yung blessing kasi hindi honorable ang pagkuha niya. So tinanggal ni Lord yung kanyang fear at guilt. Kaya ipinaamin sa kanya, hindi para siya ipahiya, kundi para palayain siya sa potential prison of guilt and fear. At ayaw yan ni Jesus na amo natin, guilt and fear. Kaya niya binayaran na ating mga kasalanan sa kanya na ibununtun ang ating mga guilt. Kaya niya sinasabi lagi, fear not. I have overcome the world. 
Huwag kang matakot na mawala yung salvation mo. Huwag kang matakot na itatakwil kita. Noon nga hindi ka anak ng Diyos, namatay ako para sa iyo. Ngayon pang anak na ng Diyos, kapatid na kita sa Panginoong Yesus, sa Panginoong Diyos sa langit, ngayon pa kita itatakwil dahil nagkamali ka. Eh, dati ang dami-dami mong wholesale pagkakamali. Inako ko na sa krus. Yung pa mga small time na mga nangyayari ngayon na nasa Panginoon ka na. Don't live in fear. Appreciate your freedom in the Lord. You don't use it as a license to do evil but you use it as your ticket to enjoy your undeserved peace and rest. It is undeserved, but nonetheless valid because Jesus died for it. Salvation is free, but it is not cheap. Jesus paid for it. So, huwag mong sayangin. Sayang eh. Namatay na si Jesus para sa'yo, tas guilty ka pa, tas afraid ka pa, nang judge ka pa ng iba. Sayang yung dugo ni Jesus. Kaya ang gusto niya tayo mapahinga, magkaroon ng kapayapaan. Yun ang ibig sabihin, we are in our city of refuge. So, Jesus decriminalized what the woman did. Otherwise, it would have been criminalized by her or by people near her. Matthew 7, 1 to 2, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So, gusto mong maging mabait sa iyong Diyos, maging mabait ka sa kapwa. Gusto mong patawarin ka lagi, patawarin mo ang kapwa. Ganun lang ang hinihingi sa atin. Ibigay natin sa kapwa yung ibinibigay sa atin ng Diyos. You are not being asked to give what you never received first. But we received salvation, we received forgiveness, love, acceptance. So just repeat it. Give it away. That's all that God would like us to do. We are being asked to give what we already have in abundance. Psalm 55, 22, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. And here, the righteous means righteous by faith, not righteous by personal accomplishment. We will never be shaken, those who have faith in the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. Mahal ka ng Diyos. Mahalaga ka sa Diyos. Ibigay mo sa Kanya yung mga alalahanin. Come out with your truth and relax. Psalm 32, 1 to 5. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. So ano yung blessedness dito? Now, those who are, not those who are forcibly changed, but those whose realities are covered by the blood of Jesus. Blessed is the one who sin the Lord does not count against them. So your sin is not criminalized. It is even covered with the blood of Jesus. And in whose spirit is no deceit. So no deceit, no pretense. When I kept silent, when I was hypocritical and pretentious, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Yung nagpapanggap, nagtatago, natutuyo sila na parang mga tigang na tigang na halaman sa init ng tagaraw. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So confess to the Lord. Seek His forgiveness. If it makes you feel good to keep on confessing, do it. Pero sa totoo lang, the law has already been defanged. Akala lang natin, umiiral pa, kaya lagi tayo nagigilty. Mas malalim yung katotohanan na at peace ka, ano man ang mangyari. Because you're Standing with God is not in your own hands. It is in the hands of Jesus. And confess to people. Para gumaan ang yung dalani, dalahin. At gawin nating policy, pag may nagtatapat, pag may nagsasabi ng totoo, pag may umaamin, huwag nating i-judge, kundi patawarin natin at i-restore. Kasi yun din ang ginagawa sa atin ng Panginoon. 1 Peter 4, 8, Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Yan ang ginagawa ng pag-ibig, tinatakpan 
pinagtatakpan ang mga pagkukulang ng minamahal at gano'n ang ginagawa ni Jesus sa atin. Get decriminalized and decriminalize others also. This is the only way to peace. John 8, 12, When Jesus spoke again to the people, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Never have to pretend to live in shame or in guilt, but will have the light of life. Jesus is light. Ang unang kinirate ng Diyos, light. Because light is life. It is nurture, it is warmth. It brings healing and wellness. And in our spiritual life, in our social life, it means acceptance, affirmation, and love. So anong niloloob nyo na dapat yung ilabas? Ilabas nyo yan sa mga taong dapat yung paglabasan, pagsabihan, pagtapatan. Out with it. Out with heavy burdens. Mga sama ng loob na kinikimti, mga galit, hinanakit. Sabihin nyo sa magandang paraan. Ilabas nyo. Huwag nyong solohin. Kumisan pati rin yung mga dinaramdam nyo na parang kayo na lang ng kayo sa buong pamilya nyo ang responsible for everybody's welfare. You can tell them that. You can say that in a nice way. Para rin sila matauhan. Para tulungan ka nila. At kung hindi ka man nila matulungan dahil hindi nila talaga kaya, na ilabas mo man lang, hindi naging pimple. Kasi mga hindi mo maibulala sa mga damdami, nagiging sakit. Kailangan na sasabi yan. Dapat lang nating i-manage yung pinakamagandang paraan ng pagsasabi. But out with it. And out with your guilt and fear. Out of hiding. Rest in God's love. You have Jesus as your way to God. You have a city of refuge. You have the Lord Jesus. There is no way and no reason why anybody should live in darkness. Dear God, we thank you that you are light and you want us to come out into the light. Turuan mo kaming una pahalagahan yung pagtanggap nyo, huwag yung takot namin sa pag-reject ng iba. Teach us, Lord, to really not only be free, but to act free. To live like free men and women because you have set us free. At nawa kami man, maging encouragement, maging instrument to set many other people free. Pagbulay-bulayan natin ang personal application ng mga ito sa ating buhay. Be with the Lord in silent reflection and thanksgiving and appreciation that Jesus is light and that His light does not consume us, His light does not kill us, but His light nurtures and loves us. Lord, speak to your people. Give us very personal directions. Be with the Lord in silence for a while.